Ready? Let's roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. We're on the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City. Proceedings will begin. The Board is now in session. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, preliminary matters on the AM docket. Case number three, 2600 Insulated Drive, postponed. Case number 10, 501-507 South Broadway, postponed. Call the case of Flight 5723 York Road, Class B, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license under Article 12-1603, small c, number 1, II, requiring $200,000 in capital investment in restaurant fixtures and facilities and seating capacity for a minimum of 75 people. This request is for live entertainment, outdoor table service, off-premise catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Hurdle. Um, just uh, so everyone's aware, I've been told that there may be a fire alarm that will, is that true, uh, Mr. Page, that we may hear, so. Um, That's the information we received this morning, Mr. Chairman. So the, so the commission is all for uh, brevity uh, in the event that it uh, disrupts our uh, hearing, uh, which could, could be likely, but I wanted to alert everyone. Thank you for the housekeeping, Mr. Hurdle. Uh, so, looking out for you guys. Yeah, so please proceed. Good morning, Mr. Hurdle. Abraham Hurdle, on behalf of Raymond Davis and Davis Management LLC, trading as flight at 5723 York Road. This is an application for a new Class B license. Um, Mr. Davis previously purchased the property and a different liquor license at this location. A transfer was filed. It was approved by the Liquor Board. Ultimately, during his renovation work, which he thought was going to be no problem during uh, the pandemic, things kind of got, well, a as we've heard many times, what becomes one small project becomes a whole kitchen, whole restaurant renovation. As a result, that license transfer ended up ceasing. Um, so we are now applying for a new restaurant license with live entertainment, outdoor table service, off-premises catering, delivery of alcoholic beverages. Mr. Davis has 20 years of experience in the industry. Um, he is looking forward to opening and operating as soon as possible. Um, he will take alcohol awareness. He's aware he has to order from wholesalers. Him and I discussed um, underage service, and he's going to have everyone who's handling alcohol or dealing with the sales side of things be alcohol awareness certified. So kitchen staff are not going to be, but all bar staff and servers will be alcohol awareness certified. Um, that is our plan going forward. We did submit paperwork showing the 200000 I believe the numbers are probably closer to 300000 in terms of total build-out costs. Uh, Mr. Davis could speak to that a little bit more than I can. Um, it is an interesting structure up there on York Road, um, and he's looking forward to operating as soon as possible. Great. Uh, just a couple questions, and um, we might as well swear in the, the witness. Just raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give and the statements that you make are the truth, the whole truth, and the truth? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hurdle, how many, how many seats are we talking? I believe there's about 95 seats, is that correct? 95 seats. 95 seats, so that meets the uh, the requirement as well as the investment uh, which uh, has been received the uh, uh, from um, DLJ contractors. Um, uh, any inter interaction with the community? I, I think you've talked you know, to the community a couple times, correct? We have details in the community. We we're well involved with the uh, Yoburu partnership as well as many of the smaller um, uh, community districts. Great as well as the uh, Yoburu Business Improvement District. Okay, and t tell me a little bit uh, of your li your, what you're thinking for live entertainment. Um, live entertainment, small, uh, small like jazz trios for brunch. Okay. And sir, how close are you to opening? If we were to give you the license today, when um, would we be able to open? Hopefully December. Okay, okay great. Um, commissioners, any questions? No questions. None. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Davis, Mr. Hurdle. Uh, based upon the application before us, the proffer, the testimony, uh, the fact that uh, this applicant meets the investment threshold as well as the seating requirement, I would vote to approve this new Class B uh, license with live entertainment, outdoor table service, off-premise catering, and the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based on the application file, proffer given by the attorney, I also approved the application for a Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with 
live entertainment, outdoor table services, off-premise catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Yes, uh, based on testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application for new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license and also the request for live entertainment, outdoor table service, off-premise catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Good Thank luck. you, Commissioner. We'll be excused. Yes. Thank you. Thank Good, you. Luck. Good luck to you. Delta by Marriott. 15-19 South Charles Street, Class B, Beer, Wine, and Liquor Hotel Motel License. This is an application for a new Class B, Beer, Wine, and Liquor Hotel Motel License under Article 12-903, small c, number one, number two, small i, which allows the board to issue a license for the use by a hotel or motel that has, one, a dining room with facilities for preparing and serving regular meals, to at least 125 individuals at one seating. Number two, at least 100 rooms for accommodation of the public. And number three, a capital investment of $500,000. This is a request for outdoor table service as well. For the record, Melvin J. Kodansky, 320 North Charles Street. This was an application that there was approved to these individuals. And I'll give you a copy of, of the license that was approved. Your and um, the um, they were approved and uh, the, has 150 rooms was 332 million dollar capital. What happened there? It's okay, I think you broke it, Mr. Kadensky. I think your client is really in trouble. <laughs> All right, there you go. Where's that fire? Where's that fire drill? <laughs> Um, and they meet all the criteria. What had happened is during COVID when things weren't going, they just didn't file their renewals and it expired. So they have to reapply. Oh, okay. But it's exactly the same people. Everybody's the same one, the same capital investment, same amount of rooms and so forth. But they, unfortunately, they didn't apply and more than a year went by and here we are. Everybody there will be alcohol certified that's serving. It's right on the corner of Charles and Redwood. Um, it's a uh, Delta by Marriott, and um, the pertinent person will, will uh, whoever's serving alcohol as a bar on the first floor would be uh, certified, and then they have the restaurant and uh, meeting rooms and ballroom there. So what are we going to do going forward to make sure that they renew their license? They wanted, they were going wanted to count on me, and I said, that's probably, isn't there a song like that, count on me? <laughs> Um, but I told them probably not because I'm starting to get in the point where I'm getting old and feeble at this point. Um, I tell everybody I used to be young and bashful. Old. I'm old and bashful, and I thought there'd be a difference. There's no difference. I told them that when the mail comes in, somebody, the manager, I think they had a problem with the manager left and relying on the manager. Uh, they also had a, a motel and hotel oh, and, um, where old uh, title guarantee was at St. Paul Street, where they've since sold that. Uh, so they're going to keep a better um, um, track on what's going on. That's the best I can tell you. And, and I did, and I, I scolded them as much as I could on it because I told them you would, as a board, would not be happy. Yeah, no, it, it, it calls into a lot of questions, uh, and it's concerning uh, whether this is the only license or there are multiple licenses in which this establishment has failed to renew. Uh, but nonetheless, um, you're, you're correcting it, so I appreciate that. Uh, commissioners, any questions? No questions. None. Okay, based upon the proffer and the application, um, I would approve this new Class B uh, hotel motel license with outdoor table service. Um, I note, I, I think, other than lack of renewal, you have a pretty good history, uh, all things considered. So, uh, commissioners. Based on the application filed, I also approved the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor hotel motel license with outdoor table services. Yes, yeah, based on testimony, a uh, letter from the attorney, Melvin Kudensky, and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor hotel motel license and also the request for outdoor table service. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good I close exhibits for the record. Board exhibit number one, 2017 liquor license. Sidebar 
218-20 East Lexington Street, Class D, Beer One and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership, requesting live entertainment. Good morning, Mr. Fogelman. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Stephen W. Fogelman, on behalf of the applicant. Um, I'll proffer if, if that's acceptable. Sure. sure. Thank you. All right, everybody knows the iconic Knickerbocker building. It's right behind us. <laughs> and uh, you probably re certainly remember the sidebar. The sidebar uh, is iconic as it gets. It got its name from the lawyers who would uh, drink there at happy hour and then at night it would turn into a live music venue. So um, enter Rachel Taft, who's standing to my right. She's been a music aficionado for her whole life, and she spent years um, full time housing and feeding itinerant musicians from her Highland Town home, smaller bands on a limited budget who would be sleeping in their van, and uh, you know who knows what they'd be eating at 7-Eleven if it weren't for Miss Taft's home cooked meals for these musicians. She started a nonprofit called Feed the Scene Foundation, and she's fed hundreds, if not more, of artists um, in thousands of artists in the Baltimore uh, area playing at venues. Show you haven't been sworn yet, so yeah. Let's, sw let's swear in the <laughs> Go witness. Ahead. And, uh, now you did it. <laughs> Go ahead, raise your right hand. Does it feel like she's got a lot she wants to say? <laughs> I'm not going to be in quiet. Swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give in the statements that you make to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right, and I'm going to finish what I say, and then I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Taft to fill in, the, uh, fill in the blanks. So thousands of artists have been fed uh, by folks, who, musicians who are at the sidebar, auto bar, other venues around the Baltimore area. Uh, she's going to be on site every day. She's going to hire managers and employees who will all be alcohol management certified. And uh, on that, and she's very excited and very serious and understands the sobering details of the rules and regulations of the Baltimore City Liquor Board. So with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Taft. Thank you. Um, we are really excited to take the bar over. It is a institution in the city. People come from all over the world to play the sidebar. Small little bands who are starting out. Music needs a place to begin, and that's what we hope to keep. Great. Very good. Yeah, um, there may have been some emails received by the agency. There certainly is a groundswell of support. A lot of people who said, unfortunately, I can't be here in person uh, Tuesday at 1030. We do have Dre Robinson here, um, who's in here in support. And uh, we thank you. And uh, we hope that you'd find there's a public need and desire for this transfer, a de minimis impact on health, safety, welfare, uh, or other inconvenience to the public. And uh, very unique place. So sounds that you. way. And just clarify for me the nature of the live entertainment. Is it going to be bands? Yes. Okay, good, great. Okay, well, certainly something this part of the city could use. Uh, so I'm, I'm pleased to hear. the last small cap room with live entertainment of our kind okay. in the city. Great. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, I don't have any questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions? No. Okay. No questions. Uh, then, based upon the proper <coughs> testimony from Ms. Taft, uh, I would vote to approve, approve this uh, application to transfer ownership with uh, live entertainment. Based on the application file and statements, statements given today, I also approve the application to transfer ownership requesting live entertainment. Yes, uh, based on testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application to transfer ownership and request of live entertainment. Thank you all. Thank Appreciate you so it. so much. Hopefully we'll see you guys there around the corner. <laughs> Thank you. Let's for the record. Board Exhibit 1, six levels of support from the community. Classic Bar and Liquors, 231 East Baltimore Street, Class BD7, Beer 1 and Liquor License. This is an application to transfer ownership and location of a Class BD7 BWL license presently located at 121 West Randall Street to 231 East Baltimore Street requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, Melvin J. Kodensky, 320 North Charles Street. This is an application transfer license. It was Schaefer's Bar and Restaurant on Randall Street. There was a death in state. Um, the only thing left is the license and um, the license is going to be moved to 231 East Baltimore Street. Now, you may say that sounds familiar, doesn't it? That's where the liquor board was for a number of years and where the old 7-Eleven was down on the corner. 
and um, they're doing the building. It's going to be a hotel there. I think it was the old News American, I think, at one time. At one time. Um, you know, that was before we had electricity, I think. And um, they had met uh, with the um, community. And you should have a memorandum of understanding, which they agreed to be uh, bound by, uh, and they were pretty thorough in what they, the things they were going to go through. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Patrick is um, going to be moving here from Pennsylvania uh, to take over this business. Um, Mr. Thapa here is going to be her manager and a scorer in um, the, um, what the, the tavern business is about. And um, she's already been fingerprinted. We'll take the alcohol awareness course. We'll make sure that all the people that work there uh, are alcohol certified. There used to be quite a few taverns in that block years ago. The landmark was across the street for a long time. Um, I think the Landsman family owned it uh, as a parking lot there, so there's plenty of parking. Um, if they had have the uh, hotel there and um, they're able to complete this, probably about three months, they think, to, f to build it out, um, they'll be ready to open it. I think the, they're progressing with regard to the uh, hotel at that location. Okay, and just for the record, they do agree to the uh, memorandum of uh, understanding to, this, yep. to be attached to the license. Yes, yeah. she okay. assigned it and the manager assigned and it. You, this has been entered into with the Downtown Partnership of Baltimore uh, as of September 14, 2022. Um, for the record, who is actually going to be managing the... Uh, well, both of them are going to be there. He's Mr. Um, he? Thapa has been uh, in the business for probably four or five years. And then Shield's going to move here uh, from the uh, uh, Pennsylvania, and they'll both be there together. Okay. And Mr. Thapa's experience? Yes. Well, you're going to give you your name and address. That's fine. Do you swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give and the statements that you make will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you give your name and can you give it for the record? Give your name and address. Mohan Tapa. <coughs> I've been running a restaurant and a liquor store in the city for over 25 years. 25 years. Okay, so you have a lot of experience, <laughs> and uh, for sure. And any issues with us before? No, not not under my license. Uh, I had a license from 911 Hotels um, from 2001 to 2010. Okay, and then the rest of the places I managed. I never had a license under my name, but I managed the place and I didn't have any issues. Okay. No issues? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Let's see. And how many employees are we talking, Mr. Kodinsky? It probably won't be more than uh, half a dozen. Their hours are limited, you know, 10 to 10 and so forth. So probably three or four. And the ones that are there that will be alcohol certified that are dispensing alcohol. Great. Uh, commissioners? No question. None. Okay. Uh, I uh, then, uh, based upon the application, the testimony, and the proffer from Mr. Kodinsky, would vote to approve this application to transfer ownership and location of this Class BD7 license presently located at 121 West Ra Randall Street to 231 East Baltimore Street with requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. Uh, attached to this license is a memorandum of understanding. Um, uh, to the extent it's uh, enforceable by law. Based on the application filed and the agreed MOU, I also approved the application to transfer ownership and location of a Class BD7 Bear Wine and Liquor License presently located at 121 West Randall Street to 231 East Baltimore Street requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. Yes, Mr. Chair, based on the testimony and materials provided today, also with the attached uh, MOU, I vote to approve the application to transfer ownership and location of a Class BD7 BWL license presently located at 121 West Randall Street to 231 East Baltimore Street, and also the request for delivery of alcoholic beverages. Medical, medical exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, MOU between applicants and downtown partnership, dated 9-14-22. Right, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Charles Street Liquors, 1122 South Charles Street, Class A, Beer One and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership, request and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Mr. Chairman. Once again, for the record, Melvin J. Kanetsky, 320 North Charles Street. 
the application to transfer the current license has been there for a number of years. The um, individuals that were there were retiring, and what had happened was um, that uh, the group uh, building was sold about a year ago, and there was an application that was approved by the board, but they could not get the whole thing together and get approved, so we had to reapply. Uh, they've had discussions uh, with Sam Kogan, will be the new sheriff in town, I understand. Yes. Through his organization, and um, they've agreed to, to meet and, and execute an MOU with regard to security, um, lights, uh, lights and, and so forth. Um, Mr. Kochman here has been op working there for the last year uh, while this thing was trying to be transferred. So we have the latest um, correspondence we have from the South Baltimore Neighborhood Association indicates opposition. You're suggesting that there's discussion of an MOU. Has one been entered into? No, it says, um, I don't know. We, Matt got it. Where's Matt? Does he run away now? <laughs> Matt's never here when we need him. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I got a correspondence dated 10 4, which was Tuesday. It says NSTNA um, just concluded an encouraging telephone conversation with the current operator. We agreed to remove our opposition to transfer as long as the MOU is placed with SBNA. Do the quick turnaround to have the MOU signed. We do have to bring this agreement to the commission so they can the license can be transferred as condition on MOU, which they agreed to. All right. So, so just so I'm clear, so they, there's an MOU that's been agreed to but hasn't been signed off on. I don't think they've submitted. They haven't submitted it, it to me yet. Yeah. Okay. And submit, they were just talking the other day. Here, I'll submit this part of the record. Okay, so will it be received? We don't call <laughs> those. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I just want to make sure I'm clear on the facts. That's all. Yeah. Can we swear in Mr. Alconmar, please? <laughs> swear or you might as well. You might as well all put your. Yeah. Swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give and the statements that you make be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Right. Yes. That, that, you got that copy of that uh, email. Is that correct from Sam Kogan? Correct. Matt Ockhammer, community liaison with the Liquor Board. Um, that email is uh, correct. Mm -hmm. Sam did communicate through that that they are working towards an MOU. Um, and they were withdrawing their protest. You know, subject to getting the MOU signed. So Okay, I, I, I'm struggling with attaching a license, attaching an MOU to a license that hasn't been agreed upon yet. You could make it conditional. Okay, yeah, I think. I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm me, not personally, but the client. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not okay with that. Unfortunately, my discussion with him occurred uh, almost a little more than a day ago, and unfortunately, I was assuming that maybe we would be signing it before, but it, apparently it just didn't happen. No, no worries. Uh, we try and be nimble here. Uh, oh, I uh, Commissioner Jones? Yeah, I have one question. Um, the terms listed on the MOU, do both sides agree to those terms, but you haven't signed anything yet? Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So we have, just so we're all clear, we have, um, this has been before us in some form before. It was approved before. It was same, approved before. Right. About a year ago, and then the 180 days and the 90 days ran, ran. before they could get the Stuff final done. approval. So they just filed it down. Right. So they've been here for the last, I think it was since May of uh, 2021. Okay. All right. And uh, this is just, okay. And the community got it. All right. Uh, makes sense to me. Um, is everyone TIP certified? They, they're scheduled to have the, all the other uh, employees are going to be there going to come in as uh, the ones that are serviced. The liquor stores so everybody will be. Alcohol certified. All right, good. All right, commissioners, any questions? Your question. Okay. Um, uh, based upon the uh, proffer, the testimony, um, the the emails uh, and letter from the South Baltimore Neighborhood Association, I would approve this application to transfer ownership with delivery of alcoholic beverages, subject or conditioned upon an executed MOU entered into between the applicant here and the South Baltimore Neighborhood Association? Based on the application filed, information received here today by testimony and proffer, I also approve the application to transfer ownership 
requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages subject to the stated MOU being signed? Yes, uh, based on testimony and materials provided today and the letter from the SBNA associations and subject to the MOU, I also vote to approve the application to transfer ownership and the request of delivery of alcoholic beverages. Life House Davis for the record, 471, letter of opposition from South Baltimore Neighborhood Association dated 10 622. Number two, email from South Baltimore Neighborhood Association. Good luck. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, good luck to you. Good luck. The Mondo 404-06 North Howard Street, Class D, Beer One and Liquor License. This is an amended application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment. Mr. Chairman. For the record, Melvin J. Kinesi, 320 North Charles Street. It's another case where um, this applicant was approved under Lamondo Inc. That 180 and 90 days expired. There was a question with the city um, getting the appropriate UNO because uh, they had it under a different address. We finally was able to straighten that out, but in that time, um, the uh, time expired, so we had to file an amended application under uh, new Lamondo um, Inc. The license, no changes. The, applicant was uh, approved before and um, they're probably maybe 30 40 days away now for getting approval because we were able to get the city which was a miracle in itself you know <laughs> it should be a light shine moment here <laughs> able to amend the UNO from Lamondo to new Lamondo and um, we have most of the all the inspections are all been done under the new Lamondo Inc. So just again so I'm clear so this we've approved this ran out of time because of permits inspections logistics whatever the case it's a common theme we're hearing yeah. okay all right uh commissioners any questions no. okay uh based upon the proffer uh, i uh would approve this amended application to transfer ownership with the continuation of live entertainment based on the application file and the proffer given by the attorney i'll also approve the amended application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment. Yeah, Mr. Chair, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the amended application to transfer ownership with the continuation of live entertainment. No, is it for the record? Good Thank luck. Yeah. City Escape Bar and Lounge, 2213-15 Kirk Avenue, Class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license. This is an amended application to transfer ownership. Please come forward, Mr. Chairman. Yes, good morning, Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of the applicants. Um, I am here on behalf of the Wooden Nickel Lounge, the iconic Wooden Nickel Lounge, since I call it the sidebar iconic. I, I feel it's fair game. Um, it's been around forever and a day, run by Mr. William Foster, uh, a pretty well-known um, public servant. And uh, he's in his 80s, I believe, 90s. and 90s, wow. And uh, he's retired. And um, what happened here is um, Miss Jefferson and Mr. Jefferson came before the board last year, last September, as a matter of fact, and um, were approved by the board uh, for transfer. Miss um, Miss Jefferson <coughs> had uh, the inspections done, the use and occupancy done, their alcohol management certified, basically got everything done, uh, except uh, at the last minute and due to the, the building not being open, we became aware of a tax hold with the state. Um, Mr. Foster, again, um, he's a, a senior, and uh, it took a little longer than we had hoped it would to get the tax issues resolved. Uh, thus, the necessitation, the necessity of filing an amended application in this regard. They have a management agreement that have been open the whole time, so uh, with, with regular operations. So the license uh, wasn't in jeopardy, but the, um, the transfer did in fact expire after the 270 days. So uh, we are back here once again asking for the transfer. This should be quick because she's pretty, she's, as far as I know, got everything together so that we'll be able to effectuate the transfer and finish it uh, within a matter of a uh, week or two. Good. All right. All right. Uh, it's very helpful. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, and I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Uh, I don't have any questions, commissioners. No, I'm Okay. 
Um, based upon the proffer from Mr. Fogelman and the application before us, I would vote to uh, approve this amended application to transfer ownership. Based on the application filed and proffer from the attorney, I also approve the amended application to transfer ownership. Uh, Mr. Chair, based on the testimony and the materials provided today, I also vote to approve the amended application to transfer ownership. And good luck. No, is it the record? Thank you. Not her first time at the rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> the Royal Blue, 1733 35 Maryland Avenue. Class BD7, Dear One and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership requesting outdoor table service. Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Fo it's still morning, I believe it is. It still so, is. All right, we're making good time. Uh, uh, and <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, good morning, Stephen W. Fogon, on behalf of the applicant. I, I do appreciate the board's um, uh, getting everyone uh, out of here before the fire alarm, so I'll do my part. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, this is also a redo. Uh, this is a, you, uh, this gentleman was before you about a year ago, and um, they, they instead of the tax hold, they had the massive construction delays and inspection delays that you've heard so much about. So they had minimal operations, uh, you know, a case of beer every couple of months and taxes paid on it, so the license is fine, but the 270 days came and went, and that's why we're back again today. Just like the case before that, uh, they are at the finish line. I think they'll be open even quicker. And uh, they, they may try to get it done by the weekend, get the license in hand. So um, you, as like I said, you've met Mr. Crawford before. He's now alcohol management certified. He's been vetted by this board. Um, and uh, it's the former gallery spot at 1733 to 35 uh, Maryland Avenue. The concept, uh, it's a cocktail lounge with food, Bluebird. It's a Bluebird? The, the Royal Blue. Royal Blue, my bad. That's a competitor. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's Royal go Royal the Royal Blue. Blue. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, there is um, a great excitement about this project. I thank you. And I'll submit. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, we just ran out of time, right? That yeah. seems to be the theme. All right. I don't have any questions. Uh, no, no questions. Okay. Uh, based upon the application, the proffer, I would vote to approve this application to transfer ownership with outdoor table service. Based on the application filed and profit given by the attorney, I also approved the request uh, to uh, approve the application to transfer ownership requesting outdoor table service. Yes, Mr. Chair, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application to transfer ownership and also the request for outdoor table service. No exhibits for the record. Thank you all. Have a great day. Good luck to you. Thank you. We now move to case number 11, 1014 West 36th Street, Class BD7, Beer 1 and Liquor License. This is a request for a transfer hardship extension under Article 12-1705, small b requesting 90 days to complete the transfer, not to exceed 270 days. Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Acting Chairman, members of the board, Peter Priebus, on behalf of the applicant, Tim Condor, who is to my right. Great, and uh, let's swear in uh, the witnesses, please. Do you, swear or, do you swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give and the statements that you make will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Uh, Good morning, sir. And you are, are you Mr. Gios? Okay. We have, we have a letter from you of September 26th. Um, I'm going to allow uh, Mr. Previs to uh, explain why, why he's before the, the board, and then we'll uh, listen to any concerns that, that you may have. Mr. Previs. Thank you. Um, I, I had a conversation with Mr. Gioso prior to this, this matter being called. But for the record, th this is a request for a 90-day hardship extension of approval of the transfer. The original hearing was April 22nd, 2022. The 180 days would run on October 19th, 2022. And we are requesting the full 90 days to complete the transfer, which would be January 17, 2023. Uh, at the time of the hearing, there was no opposition. Uh, there seemed to be um, uh, 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 
neighborhood interest in, in this project, and I believe there was an article about the, from, from the Business Journal uh, about uh, interest in this project. So the original license was across the street, which used to be the Red Man Hall um, on Hickory. So it's basically you're talking about the corner of Hickory and 36th. Um, the VFW is just to the north of the old Red Man Hall. Uh, on the corner, there is a former church, which is now offices, and the old parsonage building for the church is immediately to the north, and this, this project is directly behind uh, the, the, the parsonage building. Mr. Gioso, uh, among other properties in that neighborhood, uh, owns the building immediately to the north of the subject property. Uh, there was new construction out in the yard, um, a, a professional was hired, plans were submitted, permits were issued. Mr. Gioso has some legitimate concerns. He wants to make sure that everything is done by the book. He has an absolute right to ensure that everything is done by the book. There seems to be a, a, an issue with a window being covered up in the back of Mr. Gioso's building. Um, I was not involved in, I wish I was involved so I could have perhaps intervened and, and, and got the parties talking and, and making sure. but. He is absolutely entitled to make sure that this project proceeds per code and not in any way cutting corners. And my client is expected to do that. So while they have their differences, um, what I believe my position to Mr. Gioso is, is that this is not the forum to, to resolve those differences. If, if litigation is necessary, I hope it's not. but but I, I'm here to represent that I am instructing my client that he cannot cut any corners and must uh, get all of his inspections and it all has to be legit. And if they can't resolve it, they can't resolve it. So we are requesting, we believe that, I was out there yesterday and um, it looks fabulous. He thinks he needs about 30 days to get the permit issued, but you know how that goes. So we are requesting the full 90 days. Um, Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Priebus? No question. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gioso, uh, we have your letter of September 26th uh, opposing this hardship extension. Um, and uh, it sounds like there's some property dispute. Please, please let us know. Uh, uh, please explain your opposition. All right. The board was misled at the beginning. They, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. The, can you the, please identify yourself for the record? Yeah, if you could. Mr. Gioso. For, for the court reporter. Okay. Thank you. That's good, yes. Uh, the board was misled from the beginning of this. They're, the whole neighborhood was. It's all residential. The church was on the corner of 36th Street and Hickory Avenue. The parsonage, which they consider, is the house behind that, which uh, the pastor used to live. That was sold years ago, and it was residential. That house was put together with the church so it would be commercial. In the process, I own that building next to it. It's a warehouse. A six by eight window, which was covered up. It's a, it's a, this is going to go to court with another issue on that. But the woman that's running the, the, the uh, construction used to work for the city and they okayed everything. There's, they received three violation notices for stop work orders because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. The inspector, Mr. Goldman, came to me when I complained. He said, well, what, where's the code? This man doesn't even know his code. His supervisor then came out. So, so l let me try and reel you in a little bit. You're speaking about an inspector that's not in our, not on the, I, I, I want to focus, yeah, I want to just focus the conversation. We have, we have, we have a very simple question before us to deal with the liquor license, whether to grant um, a hardship, transfer hardship extension uh, of, um, of 90 days to give the license more time to be effectuated. Right, it's a very simple. Uh, we, uh, it is not our, it's not within our purview uh, to um, step into the zoning and the code enforcement world. We have our own code enforcement. Um, so I just want to make sure you you understand 
exactly what our role is here today. It is I not understand that, Your Honor. I understand that, except for I was trying to give you some background sure. on what had happened. That's, that's well, right. you had mentioned, if you could just be a little more brief, if you had mentioned that you felt like we were misled, if you could explain that. And the the note, uh, Bo Boozer, who's passed away, sure. was, yeah. you know, was a personal friend of mine, but he, I contacted him. He said the time for an appeal was up. So when we found out that they were doing this, putting the liquor license there. The liquor license, the little thing was put on the front door of the building of the house behind a big head. You couldn't even know, nobody knew they were even applying for a liquor license. That's why you had nobody here for it and you had nobody here against it because there was no notice of it. Then all of a sudden they get the liquor license and then they start all this construction. I had a neighbor call me and say, what's going on? I said, I, I have no idea. Then we found out they had a liquor license. I got a hold of a, a, a Bo Boozer, and Bo said, your time, you know, that, forget that. So then they, app uh, they applied for the uh, extension on it. This thing's been going on for months, right. and that's why they have so many violations on what they're doing. Uh, it's it's you're, you're okay in something. You got a lighting problem, a noise problem, a parking problem. I live in Baltimore County. I, this isn't going to affect me, but it's going to affect all the neighbors around this house where this beer garden is going. Oh, it, it's like Bo Hager's down here. It's just a bunch of people, 99 people in Hampton. You can't get parking now. Right. So that's why I'm opposed to the uh, uh, extension. Okay. Commissioners, any questions? No, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I just want to say I agree with you. Um, this is a code enforcement issue with housing. Um, I just recommend or suggest that you go through the process, or your neighbors go through the process of calling 311 to get the SR numbers. Uh, but uh, that's it, Mr. Chair. The use permit has been issued on this property, yeah. so we can't deal with that part of the, your concern. Um, <clears throat> applying for a liquor concern, that's what we deal with. I understand. And that's what I plan to make a decision on today. The, uh, if the time does come where you can protest the license on that property, you can do it then. But at this point, we're only dealing with what we had before us. Well, there extent for an extension when something that they prolonged for a period of time, and it's there have been notices to stop work orders of what they're doing, and I understand that you're not involved as far as what they did and what they didn't do, but what I'm saying is why are you why would you allow an extension on something that's already a problem? Well, because um, I think uh, from my vantage point, and we'll, we'll make a decision very shortly here, my vantage point is um, they're not going, if they have these existing violations, they're not going to get the permits issued. Pardon? They're not going to get anything issued uh, from us or from anyone else if they have these open violations. I don't. I, I mean, if they have ongoing problems that yeah. you're citing, then they're not going to get what they need done in 90 days. Okay. And they'll be back f before us on another application. Yeah, because, I mean, you have trash. So that, that's really what I meant. So, people, it's so, so I'm going to, uh, again, sir, I, I appreciate you coming. And um, I know it's not always easy to come down to City Hall and, and in, be in person and register complaints. And I appreciate that. I pre appreciate the position you're in. Um, but as I said, you know, we're here on a very limited question. And uh, for us to deny this transfer hardship extension would effectively kill the license. And I don't have a good reason within uh, our purview to reject this request to keep it alive for another 90 days. Um, I do think, as I mentioned, you know, if they have these problems, then they're ultimately not going to be able to get what they need done in 90 days anyways, would be my suspicion. Um, but so based on this, I'm going to grant the uh, transfer hardship extension of 90 days. Commissioners? Based on the application filed and testimony I've heard here today, 
and the leather dated 10, I think that's 10, 16, 22 or 10, 10, 22. Um, I also approved the, uh, the 90 day extension of hardship. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, based on the testimony and material that was provided today, I also vote to approve the request for transfer of hardship extension of 90 days. Those of us for the record, Board Exhibit Number One, letter of opposition from the community. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Let me give you my number. That's it, right? Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. There'll be no further business before the board. The board is in recess until 10.30 a.m. Thursday, October the 20th.